More air equals more power. That's why I ditched the milk carton scoop on the bottom of my Firebird and built a fully custom intake using 3D printing. And the results were so much cleaner. But first, let's talk about why this even works. Gasoline engines need three things to run. Fuel, air, and spark. So, the more air you force into the engine, the more power it will produce. This is basically the principle behind forced induction like turbos and superchargers. Turbochargers use the exhaust gas to spin a turbine. This compresses incoming air and forces it down into your engine. A supercharger does something similar, but it's mechanically driven, usually by a belt connected somewhere on the engine. Both systems cram in more oxygen, letting the engine burn more fuel and create more power. But these popular power increasing kits are expensive, complex, and not beginner friendly. Cold air intakes, however, are the budget friendly version of this. No turbines or belts, just smarter, more efficient airflow. I drive a 1994 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. It's got a 5.7 liter V8 engine, which is pretty big, but it only puts out about 275 horsepower. To help improve those numbers, the previous owner added a dual filter cold air intake setup, and whatever this thing is. No, your eyes have not deceived you. That is actually a part of a milk carton that's been cut up and screwed to the bottom of this car, and it's meant to scoop air, which it does, kind of. But it has holes in it, it's ugly, it's flimsy, and it's even blocked by the radiator scoop. So, it's time to fix that. But here's what I need out of the scoop. It needs to collect more air, be high enough off the ground to not scrape when I go over a speed bump, have some sort of mechanism to block debris from going in there and getting collected, and look a whole lot more clean. So I jumped into Onshape and started designing. For the first iteration, I kept it simple. This was just a proof of concept and making sure that I got all the dimensions correct. For the first model, I printed it in PETG High Flow from Beibu Lab. When you're making a project and prototyping something, you don't want to use an expensive, high quality filament for the prototypes. You just want to use something that'll work and be good enough so you can test everything first, just in case you need to make changes to the final design so you're not wasting any of your expensive filaments. I picked PETG High Flow because it's fast, strong, and super easy to print with. And no, this video is not sponsored by Bamboo Lab. Surprisingly, even with my subpar CAD modeling skills, the measurements on the initial prototype were pretty spot on. But the next thing I needed to figure out is how to mount this to the bottom of the car, which I hadn't even thought about before I started and jumped into this project. The underside that this will be mounted into is thick rubber. Glue and tape will obviously not work because I don't want this thing to be ripped off going 60 miles an hour. The previous owner and his milk carton used some zinc plated wood screws that rusted over time, but I decided to go with stainless steel sheet metal screws. They'll drill into the bottom of the car easily, and they'll be resistant to corrosion and weather because they're stainless steel. Before you hurt your fingers furiously typing away telling me that I shouldn't drill into my car, the only reason I'm using these sheet metal screws is because I need it to be strong and stay on there, and it's on the bottom of the car so no one will even really see it, and it won't decrease the value if I try and sell this. In the second iteration, I added screw holes, a front support, and a surface to mount something to block debris. And after a second test fit to make sure everything worked, it seemed like it was nearly done and I could finally print it out of carbon fiber nylon. But why carbon fiber nylon? Doesn't that seem a little bit overkill? Well, the answer is yes. Carbon fiber nylon has a super high heat deflection temperature, meaning it stays solid in super high heat compared to other filaments. So the burning heat from the sun radiating off the road won't be a problem at all. The heat deflection temperature of carbon fiber nylon is way higher than the temperatures that the road will ever reach. But this filament is one of the most durable out there, and that's something that you need in car parts. So it's definitely overkill, but it'll last me a long, long time. So I loaded up the carbon fiber nylon into the dry box, started up my X1C, and got to printing. A few hours later, it was done, and it looked absolutely amazing. The matte finish that carbon fiber nylon gives you hides the layer lines really well, making this look like more of a professional product, and tying it together with the rest of the car really well. Originally, I had thought of using pet screen, which you'd use on a screen door, to protect this from collecting rocks and gravel when I'm flying down the road. It's durable and would definitely hold up to the elements for a very long time. The only problem is, it basically cut the airflow in half. The holes are very tiny, so half the surface area will be covered by screen, meaning with this screen, we won't get very much airflow. So I had to think of something completely different that I could use as some protection. Then I found a piece of metal fencing, which is strong, open to airflow, and seemingly perfect for this application. So I cut a reasonably sized piece off and bended it to fit the contour of the scoop. 
then I JB welded and zip tied it on, which gave me a surprisingly solid result. The next order of business was mounting it to the bottom of the car. To act as a gasket, I added a layer of foam tape to squeeze out as much potential as possible from the scoop. But just like with the milk carton variation, the radiator duct was still blocking most of the airflow. The previous owner drilled three holes into this to allow air through. However, it's still blocking a majority of the airflow that we could be shoving down the engine. Now, I don't generally recommend cutting up important parts of your car like the radiator duct. However, since it's just a small section and it's not even in line with the radiator, I went ahead and trimmed a rectangle off to allow that 5.7 liters of American freedom to breathe more freely. And the project is finally done. But is there any major power improvements? Well, as you and I probably could have expected, nothing huge. Cold air intakes don't add nearly as much horsepower as turbos or superchargers, but the engine will be able to breathe better, which is great for its health and fuel economy too. I can once again see your fingers furiously typing away at the keyboard telling me that I'm gonna hydro lock my engine, but that's just not true. The filters are a whole two inches above the scoop. Enough water would legit have to be projectiled up into the filters, of which most of the water would hit the rubber bottom of the filters. Then the water would have to travel all the way up into my engine, and then it would give me hydro lock. Plus, I don't even own this car anymore, so it's not my problem anymore. Yeah, the water pump failed and the engine blew up. 